next, we have Edgar. Edgar is an emerging leader in cloud computing DevOps. He specialized in SaaS architectures, microservices, network virtualization, software-defined networking, CICD, network function virtualization, and has developed excellent software development skills and outstanding customer and business-driven experience. Now, Edgar has a strong experience in fully automated, continuous delivery systems with hands-on expertise in technologies such as Docker, Terraform, Helm, Kubernetes, OpenStack, Spinnaker, and Argo. He's led open source communities and has a proven record of driving operations and development teams for over 20 years. Welcome to ArgoCon, Edgar. Hello, everybody. Welcome to ArgoConf 21. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about um, our transformation for a cloud native CACD via Argo in our multi region environments at Splunk. My name is Edgar Magana. I'm a senior principal architect. So before we talk about what was the transformation on the CI/CD part? We need to call, we need to talk about the GitOps transformation. We move from imperative uh, CI/CD processes to a very declarative service definition and configuration. We did a lot of automation, and we needed to be auditable. We are providing a cloud native orchestration and GitOps experience, especially for the CI use cases that I'm going to describe in a little bit. All the CD requirements uh, were focused on having uh, the capacity to do rollbacks and canary rollouts. We also wanted to have a single pane of glass for monitoring and tracking. Imagine a very large number of applications in multi-regions. Um, it was very difficult to keep track or where services were and what was the status of those uh, services. We want to integrate and build and manage interdependencies between existing systems and APIs. In the, in, in the microservice architecture world, it's impossible to have all the pieces in the same place. So we needed to do a lot more of uh, smoke testing and system integration before releasing or rolling out into the production environments. We want to do templating and composability. Um, the idea is to have a more homogeneous CI CD process for all the application and service um, owners. Obviously, even though we want to do an homogeneous employment, we cannot mandate um, the different ways to do uh, service definition. So we actually are very open to customize, come charge, case on it, um, et cetera, right? And well, the, one of the most important things, right? You want to be successful in a transformation. It needs to be as smooth as possible for these uh, your customers. So we actually be a seamless transition uh, for this uh, new experience. All right, so what is the solution to provide all these um, uh, requirements? We call it the workflow engine. The CICD workflow engine is nothing but a collection of open source projects and internal tools to provide a CICD orchestration and GitOps experience. We're basically extending our current CICD systems, not really a full transformation or, or, or changing for our internal customers. We actually extend GitLab and Git GitHub for the CI part, and the current CD uh, uh, customization is also extended with Argo CD. So the projects and tools that we put together is Argo. We use everything about Argo, uh, CD, workflows, events, rollouts. Uh, obviously, observability is super important at Splunk. So we have signal effect engine, we have Splunk Connect, we collect all the metrics, uh, performance for uh, not just the, the applications, but also the infrastructure and also logs everywhere, right? Application services, et cetera. Um, some of this um, uh, service owners already have some Prometheus metrics we actually used uh, for uh, uh, checking the SLAs and SLO for each one of the services. And in terms of uh, authorization and authentication, we put together these three amazing projects, QOITC, DEX, and Gateway. So we can actually have single sign-on via our own Okta integration. All right, architecture is actually very simple, right? Um, we have uh, different op groups when we share a Kubernetes cluster to actually um, have uh, the QA testing, the perf, our own internal service deploy for the observability of the authorization, authorization et cetera, right? Um, it's um, in the cloud, obviously. Uh, we have uh, currently on, on Amazon deployments that we're planning to extend to other cloud providers. 
All right. Uh, we like the concept of uh, drinking your own champagne. So basically, we had an inception process to deploy Argo CD, and Argo CD deploys all the other components that I was talking in the previous slide. Uh, so if this is just a screenshot showing you that we have Argo events, Argo rollouts, Argo CD, uh, et cetera, right? I couldn't put all the applications. It's, it's going to be very crowded. But just to give you an idea that we are uh, deploying uh, all these components via Argo CD. So initially we have Terraform call to do all the infra layer and then we insert um, Argo CD with our own custom session, with our own uh, configuration, and then Argo CD takes care of deploying all the other components. Um, as you can see here, this is all in cluster, which means in the same cluster where Argo is running, but we can extend to other clusters as well. Argo workflows. Argo workflows is amazing, right? We actually doing a lot of orchestration with Argo workflows, right? Again, this is just a simple example where we are actually configuring um, an environment. This is um, a specific set of uh, cloud regression tests for our uh, Splunk products that actually run on demand in parallel and it's very extensible, right? If you have experience with uh, GitHub Actions or GitLab uh, runners, they could actually uh, start running out of capacity very quickly with workflows because they are Kubernetes jobs, uh, they are very extensible, are very flexible. Um, it's, it's amazing the transformation that we have done for our QA per teams, right? All the system integration, all the cloud regression now is being getting on board into workflows and it's actually very, uh, very easy to maintain, very extensible, and scalable is one of the most important. Um, I was talking about observability. So again, a key, uh, here we have a couple of uh, screenshots. On the top part, we have uh, Splunk for all the logs. On the bottom part, we have actually um, uh, the observability part about the uh, signal effects, actually. So here we see um, all the pods detail, the workloads, and all details. Uh, we can actually set up alarms uh, connected to big drops for you know escalation and things like that. So it's it's very uh, very complete solution and it's actually out of the box. This is one of the most important things that we wanted to have when we started at this project. Once you do the inception project, Argo CD takes a uh, care of the rest and everything is up and running in, in minutes. Practically, the thing that it takes uh, longer is actually the infra layer. But once you have your infra completed, the rest of the things are very quickly. In that transaction, right, one of the best ways to actually, uh, you know, guarantee that we are under or above our SLA, SLLs, is actually with synthetic transaction. So there is another amazing uh, Splunk product that actually gives you the full visibility of your uptime, what is your trend, where are you having uh, potential degradation of your service or performance impact. So again, it's all part of the same package. All right, let's talk about the CI CD use cases. The first one is, is the one that we already have in production. I was um, I was saying before that we have integration with both GitLab and GitHub. So this is the one with GitHub. Um, we actually use GitHub Actions to extend um, uh, the CI uh, uh, capabilities uh, for our technical add-ons. Technical add-ons for Splunk are actually open source uh, applications you can consider like plugins or extensions on the Splunk platform to connect with other uh, software as a service uh, solutions such as Salesforce or Workday. Uh, because they are open source, they are actually total, totally isolated from our internal uh, processes. So we actually have two workflow engines, the one that we use for external technical add-ons open source, and the one for our internal processes, which is the one that is connected with uh, GitLab. So this one um, is actually fully automated. So external developers are committing code, there's Git interactions happening, we call a workflow. The need for a workflow is because these uh, technical add-ons needs to be tested in an isolated environment against or uh, with a Splunk uh, up and running instance. So we orchestrate creating uh, that instance, executed um, all the uh, testing, regression, collecting all the data. We are also you know, connecting to S3 to upload in the uh, TA packages. Uh, we have connections with Secret Manager in AWS and you know everything is, is part of the workflow. Uh, because all these uh, testing needs to happen over and over again, we create these environments, complete the testing, and then 
uh, delete the environments and verify that everything is being taken care of. So we minimize the resource consumption. And as a result of this um, uh, TA automation process, we're saving tons of money in the cloud. We have a lot of uh, concurrency for these uh, pipelines. In the in, in the past, we have a lot of limitation because of resources, and uh, not just because of the money that they cost, because the availability of the resources. Um, we have improved drastically the secure and the compliance for these uh, production system, and it's very flexible. We're so happy of, of this transformation. And uh, this is a, a perfect example for a CI, uh, very successful uh, use case. Now I'm gonna talk about the CD part, right? Um, CD is uh, for us a very critical part because we're extending our, our cloud services. We're going multi-cell, multi-region. So in this animation, I will explain to you uh, what is the work in progress at Splunk to actually use Argo as, um, and it's not just Argo CD, it's Argo CD and Argo workflows to do the full CD automation. So basically we're gonna have, you know, the CI cycle to be completed. Uh, system integration, small testing, everything in the CI. So you have an artifact ready to be rolled out or a set of artifacts. Actually, in the GitOps world, you also want to have um, um, an artifact for uh, your application or a set of artifacts for your application. And then also your manifest, how you're going to deploy that application, right? Help charge or just create deployments, uh, demo files. So uh, that's kick off the service rollout. Here we have the ability to tell developers, you want to do automation, full automated, or you want to have a notification via Argo events that you're ready to do deployment so you can actually do you the manual sync up uh, between this uh, uh, GitLab repository or and your uh, CD instance. Um, it's optional, right? But in a, in a full automated world, it's going to get in sync. Um, because we don't want to do a blast radius of a new application all over the world, right? Um, so what we do is, first of all, we're going to have a workflow that understands our kind of rollout for the development, staging, and production cells, and then for all the multi-region, multi-cell environments. So this workflow understand um, um, that functionality. We'll talk to the Kubernetes API via Argo CD. It will start the rollout or a new service. In this example, it's just... Um, you know, um, a, a service called Quora. Um, it will do the rollout. Internally, at the cluster level, we can actually do blue-green and also Canary there. In this example, we are actually contacting um, some service metrics at Prometheus to see if we can continue the deployment to other um, Kubernetes clusters. Um, our results are coming back green, everybody's happy. So um, because all this validation is, is going well, we go to staging, it's happening, it's, it's all going well, we go to production. Even that this cl cluster should be as, as close as possible in terms of configuration, you know, things could happen, right? Maybe that service is going red on the production system, but you're not impacting the whole ecosystem, right? All the customers all over the world. You identify in that first production cell and you say, you know, uh, we're going to roll back this. So we do that. So we send a notification to roll back um, to the Kubernetes API and we can actually roll back um, all the way to the development, all the way to, you know, like um, all the clusters, or we can stop based on the workflow um, where we want to do the investigation, maybe in the staging or maybe in the development cell. And then we do the investigation, identify where we're wrong, and then we try it again. Uh, with full confidence that customers, our external customers, are never impacted. If everything goes fine, well, we actually go to the uh, other regions. Um, and this is, um, again, it could be region by region. You don't want to impact. Or you can actually have like, you know, like low impact customers, MVP customers, and then you can actually build your workflows to uh, impact um, um, one set of customers and then other ones and then other ones, right? Maybe you have contracts with customers that you have to have like notification about changes in our application. So we manage that via workflows all the time. And that's it. That's all I have for today. Um, I hope you have enjoyed this uh, conversation, this uh, set of use case that we're using uh, here at Splunk uh, to leverage the GitOps concept and actually using this amazing open source project called Argo. Thank you.